Um, I'm Ingi Erlingsson, founder and creative director of Golden Wolf. So Golden Wolf is an animation studio. Um, we do lots of different types of animation for like commercials, for um, movie studios like Netflix or Disney, um, all kinds of stuff really, like mostly short form, mostly kind of like 15 seconds to a minute. Probably uh, the, the, the piece that might have been seen the most might have been the, um, either the DuckTales opening titles or the Powerpuff Girls opening titles. Probably not what we're famous for, because people might not know we did it, but that's probably what's been seen the most. I don't think so. I don't think the content of the work changed. I mean, we kind of like, um, we had a slight like, attitude shift towards like some of the stuff we do on our personal stuff. Like a lot of, um, I mean, not that it's changed completely, but like a lot of the stuff we were doing before was very kind of like, it was like action and violence and kind of like, you know, like, um, you know, like Michael Bay style stuff kind of, you know, like, like sometimes a bit like negative or whatever, but like, um, we kind of got to a point with that where like we'd gone through the pandemic and like we saw like how like how like negative the world was and like you know the internet and like you know people arguing everywhere and like we we kind of started to do some stuff that was like really like almost like over the top positive just because just because we wanted to kind of like counteract the the negativity in the world and like we didn't feel like some some of the stuff that or well, some of the themes we might have been using before might not have been as as kind of relevant you know in a world that like already kind of is is turning a little bit negative well, so we did a we did a um, we did a piece. Um, it was an animation, and it was like a t-shirt range, and we did like incense and stuff, like made a little products, and it was basically called. Um, it was <laughs> gonna swear. <laughs> yeah, okay. It was called go go love yourself, but next to the love was a fuck with a with a line like uh, stricken through it. Basically, go fuck yourself, but go love yourself. Um, and the whole thing was kind of based on kind of like hippie, like it was like peace symbols animated like as characters and stuff like that. Like it was, it was uh, like super psychedelic. I guess like, you know, one of the big things that we discovered, which I think everyone else has discovered is like, we're perfectly capable of working anywhere or like working from home or like, you know, kind of um, not doing five days a week in the studio. Um, weirdly, the, the first year of the pandemic was the most, probably the most productive year we've ever had as a studio, um, which obviously meant that like, lots of people burnt out and had to take lots, lots of lots of time off and stuff. So like it was it was hard because you kind of learn that, you know, you you learn how to work from home, you know, like I think before it was like if you work from home, you were just doing the washing all day. Um, whereas um, whereas now, like people don't don't always know like when to stop or like, you know, the, the, the you need to know like when when work stops and life begins. Um, so I think we've kind of like we've learned how to do that a lot better now, I think. Um, it's a good question. I think like like the the first one was such a well the well the first one we experienced was such a novelty. You know I think um, um, I don't know maybe maybe like try to enjoy it. You know what I mean? Like it was kind of fun, but like you didn't really know what was happening. I think if everyone had known it would be like two years or whatever or more, then I think they would have reacted a lot very differently. Like I think we we were told in the UK that it was going to be two weeks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so I think like probably, probably plan for it better and just to kind of like, I don't know, like think of, think of ways of being able to utilize it. Cause I think, I think um, it just very quickly got into a routine of like, you know, having a few, having a few beers every afternoon and like, you know, lots of like drunken Zooms with people and like, you know, trying to like party it out basically. But you know, that, that didn't last, that couldn't last very long. <laughs> um, I think like I, I do ask myself that question quite a lot actually. Um, and I think, I think I would kind of, I would work in a similar way to, to how I do now with Golden Wolf. So um, a lot of what I do is kind of like um, finding like new ventures or like, like new things to do, also like kind of starting, starting new projects. Um, so for example, like we're opening a, a, a music studio, like kind of as an attachment to the, to the studio that, that we've got now um, and looking at like long form and like a few other things to, to add to that. Um, so I think, I think the thing that I've realized about myself is like, it's like, even if I had all the money in the world, like, I'd still have to work. I'd still have to do something, like because I've I've realised that it's like it's the satisfaction of feeling like I've done a good job that like gives my life meaning. Like it's like that's pretty much like the the, the main thing that like I want to get out of out, out of life. Like if I go on holiday, like I just want to be working, or I just want to be like coming up with ideas or like um, you know posting stuff online or, or whatever it might be. Like I don't I don't um, switch off very easily. So I think if I wasn't doing this. Um, I'd probably just be an entrepreneur. I just, I, I don't know, like be, I'd just do projects, like make a book or like, you know, like do, do lots of different things. 
I don't know. I like, I've, I've got like a really hazy memory of my childhood. <laughs> um, there was lots of books. I mean, I think like the, I think the one book that I remember that wasn't from my childhood at all, but it was from my, my teenage years was a book called Subway Art. It's like a graffiti book. Um, and that just blew my mind. I mean, that, that's the only reason why I'm into art now was, was that book really. Um, just, I didn't even knew it existed. And there was just like this whole book of graffiti on trains. And I, I was just, I was just so amazed that it was even a thing. Like, I'd, I don't think I've, I'd really even seen a subway train before because I grew up in Iceland and there's no trains there. Um, it just blew my mind that people were doing like such amazing art, but like illegally and breaking into train yards. And well, there's one train and it's, um, it's on the harbor and it's got a track of about 10 meters. And it's basically like a, like a museum exhibit. Like, it's the only train that's ever been in Iceland. <laughs> I think like, I, I, I don't know whether it was a mistake or not. I didn't, it didn't, it, it felt like a mistake at the time, but um, I mean, obviously like after, after reading that Subway art book, I got really into, really into graffiti um, and, and eventually got arrested painting graffiti on, on trains, like, like what I'd seen in that book, um, which really, like, it really felt like I'd fucked my life up, like completely, like it, I was, I was going through the courts for like six months. Like, you know, I had to go, I had to go to court like four times. Like, it was like, you know, it was heavy. And I was, I was like, I was like 19 or 18 or something like that. And like, I was like preparing myself for prison. Like, it was like seriously, like, you know, I was like reading, you know, well, how do you do it, whatever. Um, and I was really lucky that I just got a fine. I basically, I was going to university. I was about to start university and I had to delay the, the, the start of it for a year. Yeah. Um, and I was so nervous that everyone was going to be so much better than me and, and, and know so much more than me at university, which would have been true because I, I didn't, I was doing graphic design. I didn't even know what it was. I didn't really understand what graphic design was. Um, and so I spent this entire year, I was like working in a, in a supermarket um, petrol station um, at night. And then in the day I would just like learn Photoshop, learn Illustrator, like learn to code, like all these different things. And like started making loads of websites, started doing illustration, like all this stuff. And then I got to university and I was so far ahead of everyone, like so far ahead, um, which meant that I could focus on the creative work and l learning, learning like the sort of the theory behind everything or whatever. Um, whereas everyone else spent the first year or two learning the software. Um, so getting arrested basically like meant that I had all the, all the teachers' attention because I already knew what I was doing. I had all their support. They got me internships and I got my first job out of that because, because I was one of the few that like, was already, already kind of there by the time I started. So um, it really, really helped my career. And I, I don't think that would have happened if I hadn't have done that, if I hadn't got arrested. Um, <clears throat> I could probably just get a job at another studio, I'd imagine. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, the thought has crossed my mind. I mean, you never know. You know, things could go terribly wrong. You never know. Um, or I could just go become a fisherman in Iceland. <laughs> We've just done a, um, a one minute segment for um, a Netflix movie that I probably can't say the name of. <laughs> um, it's an animated movie coming out. I think it's coming out next year. Um, and it's a fully like CG um, movie. It's kind of like a Kung Fu movie. Um, like you know, character based, like, you know, um, you know, I guess like Kung Fu Panda, right? You know, that, that kind of, that kind of vibe. And we did a one minute segment from the middle of it. That's like a, like a training montage. Um, and we've never done anything like anything as good as this. Like it, like every, every single frame was like painted. It was amazing. Um, and I had very little to do with it, but I'm going to claim it. So they came to us with a, already with a storyboard or like an animatic for it. Um, but the style that they wanted to do was like, I've never seen that style being done in animation before, or not to that kind of level of detail because of, because of how much detail it is. Like every single, every single frame is like hand drawn. Um, and like, you know, we're talking like characters with fur and like all that, like, you know, it's like insane amount of detail. Um, but then also like the sort of the standards of, of, you know, the, the, the directors and like the, the, um, you know, they had a, um, like a, a, a kung fu expert, you know, that worked on like every kung fu film you can imagine, kind of thing. Like um, critiquing the animation and the work. So, like, you know, we're none of us do kung fu, right? Like, none of us, like, um, you know, we're animators. So, like, to to have to for an animator to kind of have to step into those shoes and having to kind of like imagine how a character would move, and then and then, but then for someone who kind of does it for a living, then critiquing it 
is 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 pretty scary. It's all like acting, right? It's like you have to you have to become the person that you're that you're um, that you're acting or animating or whatever. Like you know, so you um, especially with commercial animation, like you you become in a very short space of time, like some some of our timelines are like six to eight weeks, and we have to become experts about this thing that we're doing during those six, six to eight weeks, and then and then we're done. It depends on the look you want to get. Like um, sometimes animation at full frame rate, like 24 frames a second, looks too smooth. Um, it can look pretty weird. Um, so we tend to do it on twos, yeah, like 12 frames a second. I, th I think like, I mean, there's probably lots of things. There's, there's like the, the one question we always get on um, online and you know, probably from students or people just starting out, like everyone always asks what software we use. Or like we post something and you know, someone will say like, we'll post something on Instagram and someone will say, nice work, dude. What software did you use? And I'm like, well, first of all, it wasn't just guys that worked on this or whatever. You know, you're assuming there was one guy who worked on it. And like, you know, there's lots of girls in the team and like, and you know, there might have been 50 people that worked on it. And, and therefore as well, like there might have been 12 different softwares. Um, so I think that's, that's one of the things that um, I, I would imagine some people might not be aware of is like, um, it's just like the amount of like sort of different skills and different talents that it takes to put one thing together. Um, I mean, some people, some people are, are unicorns and they can, and they can do an entire film on their own. But like, you know, for us, it's like, it's a big, big process with lots of different steps to it.